I am Master Pro Prophetess Associate Pastor King. <clears throat> Let us bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word that shall go forth today. I pray, oh Lord God, that you will open <clears throat> every eye, ear, and heart that you will break up the foul of ground so when the word of God is sown it'll fall on a well cultivated and watered ground we thank you for the word <coughs> we thank you for your son Jesus Christ and we ask you dear God that you would Present the word in through me so that the people can hear, see, and believe that Jesus is thy only begotten son and that his word is true. He never told a lie. He was the perfect man that walked the earth that God walked with him throughout the earth. So we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the word that took on flesh and became a living soul. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, turn with me 
put me to Psalm 25. Or you, those that do it by tablet, Psalm 25. Twenty-five, verse five. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. And that is where I be coming from, the message you will be coming from today. If you would, let us go to Exodus. Thank you, Master Apostle. What's your title? Oh, the title is Lead me. Lead me in parentheses and in parentheses put teach me. Chapter uh, Psalm 25, verse 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me. And we were going to um, Exodus. And lead me, God led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. I just got to find where I was. Let's look at chapter 13, what book? Exodus, yeah, Exodus 13, verse 18, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Okay. What verse was that? 18. Verse 13, 18. And also verses 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar 
of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So God took the lead on leading the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt from Pharaoh. It's a very interesting <clears throat> story in the Bible pertaining from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. <clears throat> Some good reading. Also, let's go also to Psalm 143. I'm sorry, Exodus what? Psalm 1, how, what, well, Exodus? Psalms. Psalms 143. Uh, 143 <clears throat> verse 10c I just read the whole thing because 143 verse 10 teach me to your will for you are my God your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. And well, let me. Um, number one, I leave me prevalent pleader. So the. This character is praying, and he asking God to lead him. His character shown by prayer. The, um, okay, number one. Humility. Lead me. I feel I cannot walk alone. Excuse me a minute. He cannot walk alone. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That's what we want God to do. We, we want him to lead us not into temptation. But, you know, we try to outstep God. 
and we lead our own self into temptation. Mm -hmm. The temptation mm -hmm. is there, and you got a choice. Rather indulge in the temptation or to walk away from it. Turn your back on it. The best thing to do is to turn your back on that temptation because that temptation will lead you to a place you don't want to be. So the best thing to do is to walk away. And if you know how to bind, you bind it up. You have power and authority to bind it up of the authority that casts it far from you. Number A, A his character. Humility, I said that. I'm not, and lead me. I feel I cannot walk alone. Teach me. I feel my ignorance. Mm. Now, I did, uh, there's more to the leading of the Israel when uh, coming out of Egypt and the Lord gave Moses instructions to stretch forth the rod and they'll walk on dry land through the sea. And the sea became a wall. God calls that uh, the wall of the water to go to the right and to the left so that people can walk on dry ground through the sea. But when the Egyptians saw that the Israelites were walking on dry ground through the sea, they pursued after them. But you know, they got drowned in the Red Sea. You have to read it for yourself. Moses led them through the sea on dry ground. Okay, now, teach me is the next one. You know, that's where the, 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 um, the writer of this, see, I feel my ignorance. That's number one, teach me to his wisdom. He prays for the best things, uses the chiefest argument. Hmm. Number three, his faith. I wait and eventually expecting an answer. So he waits, and he waits. Let's go to, um, Exodus 4.12. Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. The Lord teaches Moses. You know, Moses was ignorant to the fact of who God was. Because he saw the burning bush. And then he went to the burn a bit bush to see if it burned and it didn't burn.
And he tells God, and Moses said to the Lord, verse 10, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here to, to four, nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And then in verse 13, and he said, Oh, my Lord, send I pray you by the hand of him whom you will send. And the Lord was angry at Moses. With Kenneka against Moses, he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. And the Lord already had prepared Aaron to go and speak to Moses and be the spokesman for Moses to Pharaoh, the king, I would say, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. His wisdom, he prays for the best things, uses the chiefest argument. His faith, I wait. That's number three, his faith. I wait evidently expecting an answer. Well, he got his answer. His patience, I wait. That's number four. He had waited long, but is willing to wait on God's time. He waited long on his time, but now... He waits on God time. Number five, B, his behavior. He prays and waits. Thus God is honored. Number two, he waits and prays. Thus his anxiety is demonstrated. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. One. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgment which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. That you might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you and your son and your son's son all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Also, uh, verse 7, and you shall teach them diligent to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. 
verse 8, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as fortlets, fortlets between your eyes. Number 9, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house, on your gates, on your gates. Okay, those are the ten, the, the ten commandments. Thou shalt not, shall not steal. And if you steal back there, stole something back there in those days, they'll cut that hand off that took the thing. You just got to read it for yourself and find out. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. The Ten Commandments is our foul. Uh, 5, chapter 5. Starting with um, 15. And go to 20, verse what is that? 21 to verse 21. And 4, Deuteronomy 4. Verses 1, verse 1, Deuteronomy 4, 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, to the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your father gives you. And also, verse 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land where you go to possess. I wait eventually expecting an answer. His patience, I wait. He had waited long, but is willing to wait God's time. That was A. a. It was humility, lead me. His wisdom, he prays. His faith, I wait. His patience, I wait. He had waited long, but is willing to wait God's time. B, his behavior. He prays and waits. Thus God is honored. Number two, he waits and prays. Thus his anxiety is demonstrated. Number two, twofold, the twofold prayer. Lead me, teach me. Lead me, number A is A, lead me. Help me to walk according to your revealed will. T B, teach me. <clears throat> your leading may be contrary to my expectation. One, for joy. Two, I may have bitterness. Three, 
for a wealthy place for and get a desert. Teach me of your wisdom and faithfulness that I may praise you and declare your righteousness. Although a child of God is content when his father sees fit to lead him blind folk, yet his desire to see as well as believe the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's number two. And number three, the manif manifold argument. Thou art the God of my salvation. How suitable has the psalmist ordered his case for A, the Savior has engaged to keep the saved more Emphatically. Emphatically. What? Emphatically. 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 Oh my. See, I can't pronounce that. Then Ruth has the Lord said to his people, I will never leave thee. That's A. B. The Savior has promised to teach. Jesus, after days, said that he would send the Spirit to lead us into all truth. Okay, the leader. Let's go to uh, John. St. John. Oh, before we go there, let's do Mark 1 and 2, 3. 1 and 2. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your faith which shall prepare your way before me. You know, that's the voice of John, the Baptist crying in the wilderness. Preparing the way. Let's, I read verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance. For the remission of sins. Okay, let's go to John. John one twenty nine. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him. And says, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Okay, that was something different. Um, go to John chapter 10. Jesus. So he with them, Dr. Barnes. 
Okay, John said what? Uh, wait a minute. I'll start with verse 1. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Amen. You know, the sheep follows, gets to know the shepherd, and the sheep will follow the shepherd. To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from them, for they know not the voice of strangers. Uh, verse 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. That's Jesus teaching and leading them because he's the good shepherd. The sheep hear his voice and they follow him. You want to know more about this chapter 10. You have to read it yourself and find out about what Jesus is teaching. Lead me, teach me. Lead me with, with quotation marks, I guess. Help me to walk according to your revealed will. Be, teach me. Your leading may be contrary to my expectation. For joy, I may have bitterness. For a wealthy place, a desert. Teach me of your wisdom and faithfulness. That I may praise you and declare your righteousness. Excuse me a minute. Although a child of God is content when his father sees fit to lead him blindfold, yet his desire is to see as well as believe the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Number three, the manifold argument. Thou art the God of my salvation. How suitable has the psalmist ordered his case for A, the Savior has engaged to keep the saved 
more effectively than Ruth has. The Lord said to his people, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be the excuse me. The Savior has promised to teach. Jesus in after days said that he will send the Spirit to lead us into all truth. See, the Savior has revealed his desire that he that the redeemed should recognize and celebrate his faithfulness. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. He who put our feet in the right path will surely guide our steps therein. And that would have me to re re be remembered of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me beside the still waters. The still water there, you be at the still water, that's quietness, peace. And you can see the beauty of God's handiwork at work. He who loves us enough to save us will surely answer our cry for guidance. And teach. And that brings me to the end of the message session. And I pray, Lord, that someone retain what is has been said and use Psalm twenty five. As a, as a guy of the Lord leading them and teaching them. So I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the word has not fallen on a hard heart, but on a well-cultivated heart. Yes. So that the so when the word was sown, it will fall onto a well-cultivated ground that it will go into the reservoir of their mind so they can pull it up when they need it, when they're feeling destitute or lonely or whatever they're going through. In a negative way, they can read Psalm 25 and gain positiveness. For their being, their state of mind. In Jesus' name, I pray, O oh Lord God. Amen, amen. Um, peace and blessing with the love of Christ. And remember, you never walk alone that. Remember, the challenge is great, but God is greater than the challenge. Amen.